So I get that we're all in different financial positions and I can relate, especially because I didn't come from money, to needing money when you don't have it and then the cost of trying to get it, right? Having to borrow at an exorbitant interest rate, having a bank fee you because you bounced a check. What does that mean? You bounce a check because you don't have the money and then they hit you for more money when you don't have any money to begin with. So I get it, I get that it's frustrating and I know that a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. And when you do, and something comes up that you have to pay for it, you have to come up with the money somehow. Well, good news, that's where today's video sponsor, Dave, is here to help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. With Dave, there's no interest, late fees, or credit check. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download Dave today at dave.com slash SSR, or I put a link right below in the description. That's dave.com slash SSR. Sign up for an extra cash account today and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services are provided by Evolve, member FDIC. What's going on everybody? Rob Ferretti here and I have both of my rental Corvettes behind me. I've got the C8, which is my third or fourth C8, uh, third or fourth C8 rental car. Obviously they came out in 2020. And then I have my C8 Z06 back there. You can tell the difference purely because the side blades on them right there. See that side blade, it's a little bit different from this. Otherwise, until you start it up, they're pretty much the same car. But there's been a big question as to Corvette reliability over whatever on the internet forums. Oh my God, the cars, they fall apart. They, they have transmission issues. And you've got guys like uh, James Estradman had his issues on his car. I can report with 100% confidence that these cars are very good. And I've now, I said, uh, I've got... On C8s themselves, on the C8 platform, not the Z06, we have about 75 to 80,000 miles of rental use on them, and there has been virtually zero maintenance. Um, and when I say virtually zero maintenance, oil changes, but there's been no major malfunctions throughout the first models, all the way up to this is a 2023, as is that, zero issues. And then the Z06, which seemed to be plagued with uh, some form of, of uh, cloud over its head, also at 2,500 miles on this, has zero uh, issues thus far as well. So I don't want to be the guy to like set myself up and, and run into issues and tell you there's nothing wrong with it. And then the next day the transmission falls out the bottom. But I'm pretty confident that anyone that's had problems, it's usually a problem right off the bat. So these are pretty well sorted with 2,500 miles on it and rental miles where people are enjoying it. Everybody's like, you're not, everybody's got a learning curve to their car, right? So like everybody will go out and like feel it out and then they sort of drive normally. With a rental, you have a lot of people experiencing it for the first time. So they want to see what it can do. They want to get on the car. And uh, it, with all of that, I would be, um, I would be lying to you if I said I'd expect this to have any problems. I think this car is going to be pretty rock solid for its tenure. I'm very happy to report there's no damage on the car. So I was concerned that this was going to be a little bit more car than most people are capable of dealing with. But so far, rock solid. Uh, again, my biggest concern with this is just that it doesn't look significantly different than this. And that's my biggest concern as far as pricing it. And somebody actually, randomly enough, somebody reached out to me today. Hey, what do you think? I, I can get a Z06 for 50 over. It's a non-Z07 package for 50 over list. What do you think? I, I, I'm buying it to drive. I want to keep it for a couple of years. And my response was 50 over list on that is a 458. And, and that car, the engine and everything like that was designed after the 458. It sounds a little bit like a 458. But if you're gonna spend the same money, why would you buy the Corvette, right? Like I, I get it, it's newer, but it looks like every other Corvette you have on the road, I don't think this is a $250,000 car. And, and I'm getting one with a Z07 package. 
it's a keeper. It's a good, reliable driver. I can take it on road trips. I can do whatever I want with it. But at the end of the day, that's going to be 140 grand, 150 grand. I'm not going to spend 250 on that car. So I, would I, if, if anyone asks me the same advice, I don't think you should be paying significantly over sticker for those. I think this car at 150, like with, with whatever carbon packages on it or whatever, I think 150 is the most I'd be willing to spend on a Z06. Granted, the, the C7 ZR1, uh, they seem to be selling in that price point, so I get why the market is up there. I just think as long as 458s are priced at like 200 to 250, there's no reason to be spending the same money on a Z06, because will that over sticker evaporate? Potentially. May stay there forever. May always be just like a Ford GT. Like when a Ford GT came out, I said, this isn't a $150,000 car. This is a $250,000 car that they're pricing at 165, right? Everyone was afraid to buy them, but it's a, it's a $250,000 car you're getting. Obviously, after they discontinued them, the prices went up to 250 and subsequently higher, but it was worth that. And I can tell you, this car is worth all of 70 or $80,000. It's, it's not that Z06, but it's worth all of the 70 or $80,000. The Z06 is worth 150, more so 125 is where I feel comfortable on it on a used market. You saw that with the NSX. I've called these cars forever. But if you're going to pick that one versus that one for the same money, it's that one all day long. But here, this car, it's only got 3,500 miles on it. This one, this is the 2023. Um, the wear and tear on these cars is something that people would probably want to pay attention to. Uh, this one just got back from Adventure Drives. It doesn't appear to have been washed yet, but it just saw, maybe it's got more than 3,500 miles on it now because uh, it just saw almost uh, 900 miles on the Adventure Drives Nashville trip. Handles it well. And a lot of times, the only thing you're going to see a lot more in the Corvettes is that I think they're going to handle ass essentially better than some of the other cars. Uh, my Lambo, for example, this one's getting ready for retirement, but you're going to see the wear surfaces that the stuff that the dealers love to hide, but you'll see the wear surfaces like on the seat. See, this is all right, but like this, this is from every, every fat ass like rolling into it. And what they do is they'll spray it, right? Like they paint the leather and then when they paint the leather, it looks new again. So. But you look at the door, this door could be off, and this is why people roll the things back, is this door could be off of a 6,000 mile car. The seat, however, you notice seat, like if you see something like that on a low mile car, they're probably putting one over on you. So I think the Corvettes are gonna, are gonna wear better than that. There's Porsches with significantly higher mileage that don't have wear like, like that. They don't, they don't wear like that that quickly. This car has, what is it? Uh, 24,000 miles on it now, but like virtually no wear in the bolsters of the seat. Again, this one just came back from Adventure Drives 2. But I had one guy and, and I can, as I said, the point of this video was not to, to walk around the wear and tear on the cars, but to prove that the Corvettes are worth purchasing um, and that they do hold up. A, a lot of people on the internet love to they're always the loudest, right? You think of how many Corvettes are out there. They're always the loudest when they have something go wrong. And everyone's like, whoa, all the Z06s are, they're plagued with problems. They're, they're like, and everybody makes a big deal. I am a real world example of now with four of these, we sell them generally like 25 or 30,000 miles on them, but uh, no issues, no, no like into the shop issues thus far. So I haven't had anything that's obviously the guy had the top fly off and everything like that, but that's all user error. I haven't had any mechanical issues that have taken one of my Corvettes out of service. And that's really what you're looking for in a rental car is something that stays in the fleet. So you're just worried about utilization and you're not worried about losing to mechanical failure, which uh, that you almost do. Uh, this is an Aston Martin. I've had to now, it's out of warranty. I've had to replace the brakes on the back of this at 10,000 miles, which is very frustrating because that's something you would assume would be warranty. There's no reason brakes should be going at 10,000 miles, right? I don't care how you use them, what you do, 10,000 miles and out of warranty. I would make that like a, 
an out of warranty claim on, on a, this is a 2020, so the thing's two or three years old, uh, the brake shouldn't be going. Uh, and that was a couple thousand bucks to replace those, but it's part of what you do. And, and I've seen people rent cars with like straight up dump truck sounding brakes. And they're like, well, sorry, it's only got 8,000 miles on this is what it sounds like. It's not a good look. Uh, that's why we changed them. Uh, this also, the fuel door went bad on it. So that was just at the dealership the other day. That was another $500, but like stupid stuff. I can't rent a car that the fuel door won't close on. So, or I have to take it off and now it's got a hole in the side of the car. We don't do that stuff. So out of warranty cars, especially this is why I don't carry McLarens anymore because McLarens were down 70% of the time. It'll sit here in the shop all day and it's like, all right, we got a rental on Thursday and we go to start it up and there's something wrong with it and it's got to go to the dealership. You lose the rental. It's always tough. But uh, Corvettes, great rental cars. Uh, they hold up very well. I had one guy who beat up the brakes once. He was just raging around. Uh, it's not much you can do, hot spotted it, but it's sort of uh, normalized a little bit in there. But here's what it looked like when he was bouncing around. All right, you can see the hot spots on the rotors here. One of my least favorite customers, and not the human, but the, uh, the type of customer. Guy who wants a deal. Oh, give me a deal, give me a deal, give me a deal then beats the living crap out of it. I mean, the amount of uh, speed alerts I got on this guy and the repeated threshold braking to overheat the brakes, uh, it is still a base Corvette, but that sucks because now I'll probably have to replace the rotors. I, I don't price that into the individual rental, and I love people who go, like, oh, I would have done that, I'm badass. How, how, how do you rent a car like this? And not factor in... I don't factor in a new set of rotors for a rental. And these don't have to immediately be replaced, but if I drive this now and have vibration in the wheels or something because the rotors are a little warped, that's a problem and I do have to replace those. So that's just part of what you get when you're renting cars. Should the brakes have hot spotted as in street driving? Probably not. But I guess if you do enough 150 mile an hour stops or whatever the guy was doing, you're bound to, to heat stuff up and uh, it's just a lot of it's a lot of wear and tear in a day. Let's let's put it that way. But Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching Corvette Z06. I'm gonna let's just skip over this. This is just so, although they look the same, this is just so available right now that it doesn't really excite. Um, if you've not driven this, it doesn't hurt. But if you haven't driven the Z06, your time is now. The weather is turning over, so we're gonna have good weather now in New York for the rest of the year. And this thing is waiting to impress you with how much it looks and sounds, not in the looks, but sounds like a 458, but it's actually a Corvette. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Quick shout out to my own company, Adventure Drive. So we do these driving events all over the world. 2023 is no exception. We've got three trips coming up. One from Washington, D.C. to Nashville. This is from April 26th to the 30th. Then in July, we're doing a trip to Italy, which is gonna be phenomenal. It's all Northern Italy, starting and ending in Rome. You're gonna love that one. And if you can't make it overseas or to the East Coast trip, you've got plenty of runway for the September 20th to 25th drive, starting in Napa Valley and ending in Las Vegas. That's gonna be a great trip as well. Check them out. I put a link right below in the description of every video. Hope to see you out there.